The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and ten times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast. Big changes. Big, big changes. The uh, party for dad has now been thrown into chaos. Dad's 89th birthday party. Uh, charity scam Mike has been diagnosed with COVID. Hang on a second. I think his mic sound a little wonky. Come on. So now we got to we gotta go to like plan B. So I think we're just going to go to his house, you know? No big deal. Uh, Linda says, thank God he found out. No, no, that's, that's true. This is, this is fantastic. Jesus. Uh, so I, I was talking with my brother. I can't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to just go there and eat pizza for fuck's sake. We got to do something special. So I got to, we got to whip something up. I was thinking either shish kebab bar, which everybody loves shish kebab bar, but it's a little bit of a struggle if you're going from the outside to the inside. So I don't know if it's going to be shish kebab bar or uh, Linda says the, you got to go with the corned beef. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Either way, uh, it's it's going to be fantastic. But now uh, the plans have changed. So no big deal. Just no charity scam, Mike which means a lot less funny. This might be one of the funniest people on the planet. Charity scam, Mike. And he's the type of guy that if I like put him on the spot here on the show, he he gets kind of nervous. But if I were sitting around the fire, this might be one of the best storytellers I've ever been around. I'm just, I just, I take a back seat when I'm around him. And I do this for a living. The man is outrageously funny. And you can't tell what he's embellishing and what is true. And you don't ask. You don't ask that of a great storyteller. You just keep your mouth shut and laugh. Aram says, did he ever go through with that autism charity ca- uh, scam concert? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't remember that. I remember the... Uh, the big fundraising auction. It turns out it wasn't a charity scam. But that's his name that he stuck with. He forever has to be known as that. And, uh, you know, I can say that to him and he doesn't care. But I say that around people that know him. Like, why do you call him that? I'm like, ah, you know. And then I have to give him the background and then they take it seriously. And then everything's weird. Uh, Mike just had the rug pulled out from under him. Dude, this is uh this was this is a bummer. Um Mike's dad uh has a, has a place up north right by Fear Bunker North. Like a couple of miles away. He's had it for decades. It's a nice cabin. Little piece of property and uh and uh so charity scam Mike's dad owns it and then the, the kids use it and, and it's mike's happy place it really is and then uh the dad decided to sell it and <laughs> poor mike is just oh god he's having a rough year because his heart is broken because this this was the serenity this is the fortress of solitude which reminds me yesterday on the uh it, it annoyed the shit out of me this is uh, a random thing that just popped into my head. But I was actually uh, listening to the Free Beer and Hot Wings show yesterday. And I got pissed off on uh, our old pal Hot Wings' behalf. Because they're doing a bit and the segment goes, you have to come up 
with your three favorite things in a list that you like that you want everyone else to enjoy. Now, um, I know that that, you know, it's easy to just nitpick and say, ah, stupid sucks. And I, I'd be the first one to do that too. But in this particular case, now I, I don't know if this makes for a good, interesting show. I don't know if this may, but, um, uh, what you have there is an opportunity for hot wings to come up with three things and then they just bash him no matter what they are. Now, I mean, I've done that too, but when they do it that way, it sounds like they're just doing it even though what his three things on his list are all very, uh, relatable and excellent things in my opinion. And no one on the show agrees with them and they just sit there and rub his nose in shit. And now that's on the show. I'm guessing off of the air, they're all like, hey, that all, that all sounds really fun and, and interesting and, and something I'd like to do. But they try so goddamn hard um, that it just comes off as bullshit. Anyone who's listened to it or heard it knows that they're just attacking him because they think that that's just a fun thing to do. Which again, I did do that, but I would always mean it. So I wouldn't do it every time. I'd do it when the time called for it. Like he's writing a commentary about double wrap bread or some shit. That just sucks. But his first thing on his list was going out into the middle of nowhere. Like what I do at Fear Bunker North and just sitting in solitude and quietly enjoying what you're doing. Maybe having a drink birds chirping forest you know de- you know what i do what i love and i love that shit and they just light into them they're like, oh you're a fucking idiot and just uh, just stupid shit oh my god and i'm like that is so relatable to me i so in fact you describing it makes me want to go up there right this minute but they just sit there and dogpile them and smear the queer them. And I'm like, okay, this isn't even funny. And then it went on and on and on and on. And it's like, good God, this is fucking boring, stupid, unbelievable. The banks. Okay. If I finish that sentence and say the banks are in peril, it might make some of you go and get your money out of the bank. And you do not want to go and get your money out of the bank. If we all go and take our money out of the bank, the bank doesn't have everyone's money. They never have everyone's money. They want your money so that they can take it and make more money. If a few people take their money out, it's no big deal. If we all take our money out, it's a big deal. You got to understand, this is a Ponzi scheme. One backed by the federal government and insured by the FDIC. In fact, when they were describing it, to, uh, on, I, I don't know this off the top of my head. I'm just ripping it off what I heard in the last 48 hours. I'll never claim credit when I should. And I don't want to seem like, hey, I know shit about banking. I don't. I don't at all. I, all, I, all I can do is take what I hear and make it sound like I know what I'm doing. But I don't. I have no fucking clue. In fact, a day or two, I'll forget that I even said this. But, but from what I understand, in a dumb pedestrian idiot guy on the streets point of view money goes into the bank and then they make money off of your money and it sounded remarkably like robbing peter to pay paul in a way not exactly but you know i mean like bernie madoff when people started uh saying hey bernie i want my money he didn't have it the banks right now are bernie madoff They're legal Bernie Madoffs. They're legal Madoffs. 
For some reason, the Silicon Valley Bank or whatever the hell bank it is in California, every dickhead there decided to take all their money out. So the bank collapsed. Then it happened to some other bank overseas. Uh, To start the week, no other banks collapsed. But as of right now, there's two in the U.S. that are like, "Uh uh-oh, uh-oh. And that's because every fucking idiot uh, is taking their money out. Now, there is no point in doing this, and you are only making this worse if you decide to do this. First of all, any asshole that has a ton of money in the bank is a stupid dick. Okay. Outside of four or five months of emergency funds in case the shit hits the fan in your world. There is no reason to have any more money in the bank than that. Like a stupid savings account. A business checking. If you do a high amount of volume in and out of your, um, of your business. Obviously, you know, if you're, if you're taking uh, $80,000 uh, of a day's receipts and putting it in, and then you're spending 60,000 of it in overhead and, and wages for employees. Well, obviously these accounts are guaranteed for $250,000 in some cases more. The government backs that and there's insurance by these banks. That's why they say FDIC insured. You want that. So unless you have, uh, and even if you have more than $250,000 locked in, locked away in a bank, it's still incredibly ignorant to just go and yank all your fucking money out. And you are contributing to uh, a major problem if everybody be- thinks like your stupid ass. Now, audience members of this show, uh, I would probably say that I can count on one hand how many of you, including myself, have more than $250,000 stuffed into a bank. I know I don't. But fuck. Jesse says, funny how that works, though. Banks take your money to make more money and pay you like 0.75% interest for letting them use it. Correct. But you still get to use the bank services. It's a safe place to put your money. That's what you're paying for. The the ability to um, write checks, process. Yes, that's why you should take, outside of what I said, your emergency fund, And uh, if day-to-day operations, you shouldn't keep that much money in the bank. You should be investing it in a Roth IRA or some type of mutual fund or a trust. You should have a person to invest your money for you. And then you pay them quarterly or monthly for what they're doing to make you money. Do you understand? Don't just throw it into a fucking bank and, oh, I'm done. I put it in the bank. Dumbass. No, your money needs to work for you. Does real estate count? Of course, that's the best. But if you want to make an aggressive amount of money, if you're like, oh, my God, I'm only 35. I don't have any fucking money. That's because you're not aggressively investing it. You got to give it to some dick. Who's going to ignore you and then aggressively buy shit. NW980 says SVB Silicon Valley Bank failed because it held a lot of debt bonds. They planned on making so much money on selling those. But when they sold the bonds, they had to sell them at a loss because of the interest rate hike. So what they thought they had in equity was much less than they thought. It's like selling a stock at a loss. And there you go. Thank you for that. And then when uh, people start hearing about, uh uh-oh, wait a minute. 
Fuck you, SVB. I'm going to get my money. And then, oh no! The thing just falls apart. Silicon Valley Bank catered more to tech companies, and that's the issue. A lot of small tech companies stood to lose huge amounts if the government didn't step in. Man. Uh, Sam says, yep, they invest it. You might as well invest your money instead of leaving it in a bank. Yes, they're going to take your money and do what you should be doing with it. So in my opinion, outside of like your day-to-day home operations, write checks for energy, write checks, uh, checks for cable, if you even do that, or electronic transfers and shit like that, I, I, I keep about $800 in my checking account. I am not kidding you. If it gets anything above that, I'm like, I don't need that much. I'm just, I'm basically just dumping money in. I keep it at about a thousand. Anything else goes into the savings account to save for, uh, you know, in case there's an issue to not work for six months or something like that. And then the rest, I give it to this guy named um, uh, Mark. He doesn't like me saying his name. I'm not kidding you. I said, you should mark it. He says, no, I can't. It's against some type of rules. He's a really, he's, he's, a, he's so by the book. And then I give it to him and I have no idea what happens to it. None. If you want, I'll introduce you to him, but you have to reach out to me via email. By the way, this show happens each and every day in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. Baldwin Ace Hardware, a beacon of DIY awesomeness in the Northland. Made a Facebook post yesterday. It has potential to start to get weird. And that's a good thing for me. <clears throat> Nick says Mark made off with Eric's money. Jesse says, yes, this is way different from 1995. Eric it buys new cars on his way home from getting fired. And uh, Aram says, do you know Mark's name? Last name? Hopefully. Yes, I do. Um, and that is true. I remember, um, I got fired and, drove about a half mile to a dealership and traded in my Corsica for a minivan. The minivan that I got was the minivan that eventually worked its way here to West Michigan. That the the windows didn't open, that the NFK uh, couldn't open when I farted and he puked on his pants. That was the, that was the minivan. Sitting there, you know, uh, financing paperwork. And they go, yeah, do you have a job? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. Here's the pay stubs. It hadn't even gone through that I was fired. And I was able to buy that car. <laughs> yes, the hot zester minivan. That was the one. All right. So a Facebook post yesterday. Real simple. Giving away tickets to the West Michigan Ironmen. So the way this works is if you go to my Facebook page, you can see the post with the uh, Ironmen logo. Just like it. All you got to do is like it. Now, if you have no plans Saturday evening, I want you to like that post and you're in West Michigan. Because uh, I'm giving, I have 10 tickets, two, five, family five packs of tickets to go see this game. And I, I have like a little um, uh, box, if you will. And it has my banner in front of it. It's the Eric Zancho podcast uh, fan perch or whatever the fuck it is. And there's tables and you can get your drinks and uh, get your food. It's at this uh, venue called Trinity Health Arena in Muskegon, which is an old building 
but they redid the whole thing and it's really great. There's a nice, uh, uh, restaurant called rad dads in there that I just love. They have the best tacos there. It's in the arena, actually in the venue. So go get the food, get some cheap beer and, uh, watch indoor arena football. Now, this might be the best kept secret, the Ironmen. Okay, now they only play like eight games a year, four home, four away, in a, um, a uh, arena league comprised of teams in and around Michigan. So they keep travel expenses to a minimum. Now, the problem for the rest of the league is that where I live is full of uh, areas and schools and high schools that have excellent football players. So whether it's a kid leaving high school and doesn't want to go to college, or if it's a guy who plays college and doesn't make it in the pros or whatever, you get a lot of people that have interest in this team, the uh, West Michigan Ironmen. So much so that they're really good. And I don't think I've seen a game that they didn't beat the holy shit out of the other team. I mean, they destroy teams. I think the last game they won- they uh, played was a couple of weekends ago. And no shit, it was like 89 to 6. Okay. Um, now I am at the venue and I do the, the PA announcing like I do for a lot of these teams. But in addition to that, um, when I'm not talking to the fans during like a a timeout saying, Hey, here comes the t-shirts and shit like that. Um, I am on the internet broadcast of the play by play. Um, I decided Amanda needs a break. I'm sick and tired of hearing about lesbian hockey. No one cares about lesbian hockey. Uh, Amanda's daughter plays on a lesbian hockey team. And they are known as the lesbians. So the lesbians are playing in a tournament called Scissor Your Lesbo Lover uh, Ice Tourney. And Amanda's lesbo daughter is with a bunch of other lesbians. And they've now traveled to some town that no one cares about. And Amanda is watching all of these carpet munchers play hockey. Now, despite numerous warnings, this stupid woman continues to tell everyone about this stupid hockey game that no one on the planet cares about except for the mothers of the lesbians. Despite numerous beatdowns like the one that is happening as we speak, this stupid, stupid woman will not get it through her rock head that no one cares about lesbian hockey. Thus, occasionally, I have to put her on blast. Because no matter what I do, she won't stop talking to the audience on Twitch when I am trying to tell a story about lesbian hockey. So I'm just letting you know that if I see your name show up on Twitch for the rest of the day, I'm putting you in a timeout. Because you've talked about this for probably three straight weeks. And I've ignored it. But now you've gone too far. So I'm going to go out of my way. If I see PRBY Amanda Lynn. To put you in timeout for 600 minutes. Thank you. Carry on about your day. 
Where were we? On the internet broadcast, I am the color commentator. The lead play-by-play guy is some dude who used to be an assistant coach at Western Michigan University. I forget his name. It doesn't matter. I think it's Coach Mike or something like that. Anyway, um, it's my job to just be an, a troll. So I sit there on the broadcast cracking jokes about the other team, making fun of how ugly the ref is, you know, and uh, I can tell you that um, some of the most incredible hits I've ever seen in any sport have been during these games. And for some reason, these players just pop right up. I don't, I mean, I've seen people just get murdered. Not always. Sometimes they stay down. We were taking on a team from uh, North Carolina last year, and I was being so brutal to the other team that I, I shit you not. The owner of the team was listening in Carolina and called the coach of our team on his cell phone and on the sidelines, he gets a call from the owner of their team and says, if this guy on the internet broadcast doesn't stop attacking us, I'm pulling my team off of the field at halftime. Now, I don't know this has happened. He, he reaches out to me and calls me while I'm on the air. And I, I like turn away from the mic. I go, yeah, what? He goes, oh my God, you won't believe this. He's laughing. He goes, this so-and-so just called you as a chick. And she, he tells me the news. And I go, yeah, what do I do? He goes, keep going. Do it more. So this is great fun. I'll post a link before the game um, on Facebook and whatnot so you can check it out for yourself if you're not actually able to go. But anyway, I'm giving away these damn tickets. So go to the Facebook post, this one right here, and like it. Now, I noticed, because on the post I wrote, free tickets, join me Saturday 318 in Muskegon as the West Michigan Ironmen take on the Battle Creek meth heads. In Great Lakes Arena Alliance football action. Okay. Now, I knew that the post would generate some laughs. This person says, been looking forward to a game. Kevin Corbett, the Battle Creek who? Laughy, laughy emoji. Andrew says, the meth heads, laughy emoji. Uh, you notice none of these say, sorry, I'm going to the lesbian hockey game. I can't attend. This guy, Patrick writes, is there an actual team called the meth heads? Now, I don't want to believe that this guy actually believes that that's true. I want to believe that he knows it's a joke, but I don't. I wrote, you should see these guys' teeth falling out, the whole deal. Now, this is where I think it could get weird. This person, Leo Frazier, who looks really serious. Look at him. Here he is. He's on uh, sitting on the, on the hood of a BMW with some guy who looks like he breaks people's legs for a living, sitting on the uh, hood of his BMW. And he's uh, welcoming. Look at Leo here is welcoming his newest licensed broker and financial specialist, Shania Gonzalez. She left her old firm for more freedom and more commission. Would you let this woman with this on her arm do anything for you financially? Oh, no. Oh, no. Please. Anyway. Uh, this dude, he responds a little weird when I, I, I said, yeah, you should see these guys are teeth's falling out and everything. He writes, not a single player on the battle Creek smoke are even from battle Creek. Now, I don't know why he wrote that. I don't, I don't get it. Who cares? So this dude right here, this Leo strikes me as the problem. Like this, with just some gentle nudging, we could get old Leo here to lose his mind. 
So just be on the lookout for that. If you're fo- if you want to follow the post later on, I, I got to think of something to write here in order to really set this, this guy off. So that's what you want to do. Like that post. That will be so much fun. Stand by. I need a drink. Okay. Remember, this podcast is available in audio form wherever you download shows. Whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or uh, iHeartRadio, CastBox, I'm on all of them. Download it to your heart's content. If you are a person who only listens to the audio podcast, do me a favor and follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Or download the Twitch app and search Eric Zane Live. Follow the page. Link up your Amazon Prime account to subscribe to it or subscribe to it on your own. Or don't. You don't have to subscribe to it. It just keeps you from, the rumor is, at least what I was led to believe, you will not be uh, interrupted by commercials. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, getting the show as it happens live right now, I'm going to send you on your way. If you want the full show uninterrupted, you got to be on Twitch. So do what I just told the folks, uh, uh, you know, who are listening to the audio podcast to do. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. We'll send you on your way. Twitch and Facebook. Brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Stand by. Still massively congested. Chris says, drug dealers got to have a financial plan as well. All right. I was going to get to this story yesterday. But we didn't have time. Um, one thing I know nothing about until I read this article is that if your penis is uh, maybe small or uh, oddly shaped, there is hope. Um, Now, for me, um, mine is straight, and there's nothing uh, peculiar about it. But for the person in this article, known as Matt, and I think this is him. I think I'll even show it. It shows you, unless if this is some type of stock footage, I think this is the guy. Some type of uh, uh, bit of photography. Looks like on a rooftop somewhere where he's looking out into the distance. His back to us so you can't see his face. This man right here had a concern with his penis. So he wanted to do something about it. The article says Matt liked his penis. Well, that's this is a contradiction. Because like two sentences later, it says it bugged him. So he doesn't like his penis. It says the length was fine. The girth was awesome, but it was curved. Now... I've seen cranks in some of these, uh, in some pornos where it's like, uh, uh, like a banana. It's, it's like going up, you know, which I think based on the anatomy of a female that could actually benefit her because there is a spot of tissue, uh, in the, uh, right in the no, no 
that some refer to as a G spot. And if that ding dong has like uh, access to that zone, that's a good, good thing. But this guy's ding dong apparently was shaped like a C. Like uh, it would, it's making a hard, a hard right turn. According to the article, this is just a gentle bend, but it bothered him. I wanted it to be straight, said Matt, a contractor in his 40s who lives in the western U.S. He worried the curve was hurting his girlfriend during sex. I don't know. Maybe ask her before you decide to do this. I mean, if you ask her and she says, no, I don't even think about it. No big deal. Um, he did some, uh, some research uh, do your own research. He diagnosed, uh, he diagnosed himself with Peyronie's disease. That's a fancy word for your ding dong bends like a C. There are some of you listening whose ding dong has a bend to it. Did you know you are stricken with Peyronie's disease? One in 10 men has Peyronie's. He discovered there's hope. Penema. It's a product. It's a semi-solid silicone, uh, silicone implant. All right that ugh, this is this sounds terrible i don't even like talking about it it's surgi- surgically installed into the penis shaft just under the penile skin now i want you to think like some of the uh, iron man suit up scenes you know how like uh he puts his arm out and you see it go over the arm. I want you to picture that. Okay. So um, when the ding dong is limp, this thing is, it's like a segmented um, device like Iron Man's armor. And so when it's the, the penis is, uh, is, is, you know, facing down, whatever. The armor is not engaged. But then, you know, if the Mandarin shows up and tries to kill Iron Man, your ding-dong is going to go thump right up and, and do it and keep it straight. So this guy's like, man, I'm, I'm going to do it. He knew that the device Panuma was invented in the early 2000s. By some doc, James Elist, an Iranian-American urologist. Originally, he used it on patients whose uh, penises had narrowed after they received a prosthesis for erectile dysfunction. Oh, God. He soon discovered that Panuma not only maintained preoperative girth and length for patients with ED, but also added a bit more flaccid length and flaccid and erect girth to what they had before the prosthesis. So you put all this shit in there and all of a sudden your ding dong is, it's, it's like a super dick. Okay. In other words, it could help men who wanted a bigger ding dong. And, um, it says in other words, the, I, the article actually reads in other words, it would help men who wanted bigger dicks and there were wagon loads. You know, I can just picture, all the former Zaniacs banging on the door, you know? In 2004, after getting general clearance from the Food and Drug Administration, Elis began offering Panuma as a penile enhancement device. In 2017, the FDA gave Panuma, which comes in sizes large, extra large, and XXL, and then it says a 510K clearance. I don't know what that means. Allowing the, okay, it says allowing the device to be, the device to be commercially distributed and used for the cosmetic correction of penile soft tissue deformities. 
since 04. 5,000 dudes have gotten this done. And E-List has trained 17 other urologists to implant it. In a 2018 study sponsored by International Medical Devices, the E-List owned company that distributes Panuma, the implant increased mid-shaft circumference in 400 men by an average of 56.7%. Let me just say, if my dick stops working, there is no way in fuck that I am going to allow someone to stick something in there like that. Forget it. I'll just not have sex. Whatever. I'll just have it shrivel away and die. There is no way I'm going to do this. Forget it. I just, I, it, it doesn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't interest me. I mean, to actually stick something under your dick skin. No way. Hold on. I got to check to see if Amanda's back. All right. No appearances yet. You guys got to warn me if you see Amanda talking about lesbian muff to muff scissors soccer. She left. Good. Thank God. Um, the doc says, I thank, I thank God that I was able to bring something new. Matt, the self-diagnosed Peyronie sufferer, couldn't find any negative reviews about the procedure, and he liked that it was reversible. If something went awry, he thought the implant could be easily removed. <clears throat> and his organ would return to a pre-surgical state. It cost $16,000. His insurance did not cover it. His uh, mindset was, people invest in redoing their decks. I'm investing in my body. However, a few weeks after doing it, in 2019, he began experiencing terrible pain. <laughs> oh, no. Followed by a so, uh, something known as a seroma. Fluid collecting under the skin. Significant swelling. His penis throbbed like a metronome gone haywire. Oh. The doc told Matt it was all normal. The swelling would decrease over time. It did not. Ultimately, Matt's penis was ruined, curved even worse than it had been before. It said it was like an orange, <laughs> described as like an orange peel in the sun. He said he had to push it into the toilet to go pee. Oh. The penile implant market is expected to hit $640.5 million by 2027. Ugh. It says, while ED drives the most interest in penile plants, lots of guys are insecure about their size, even if they're statistically normal. And there's a picture of Lonely Nick. Uh, it says, often ugly men like these have their wives lose them because of small cocks. Uh, often they don't know what normal is, thanks to a locker room shower comparison and easy access to porn. It says they have no idea what an average size penis is. For the record, the average penis is about 3.6 inches flaccid with an average girth, girth of 3.7 inches. When erect, it is 5.1 inches with an average circumference, circumference of 4.5 in, inches. Micro penises, which have a strec, stretched penile length of three and two thirds or less are rare, except among former zaniacs, it says. Uh, there's also further discussion in this article about what surgeons do, which I don't want to pass out, so I'm not going to read it. It talks about what is done with this device called Penuma. Penuma patients are telling 
Insider, the publication I'm reading from, that they've suffered in silence. Uh, because in, in interviews with nine dissatisfied Penuma recipients, all declined to use their full names, partly because they were afraid of being sued and partly because, well, penis enlargement surgery. They're, they're, they're embarrassed. None of them want to broadcast their enhancements in a public forum. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. You're kind of a fucking dumbass. I say screw them. That's your own damn fault. If you're so stupid, you get a thing jammed in your dick. So this New York man said he got Panuma as an early 40th birthday president, uh, present because as a six foot seven gay man, people expect me to be hung. So it'd be like if Kyle Ryan wasn't married. Let's say Kyle Ryan is single. And uh, he's taking home this this guy who's as big as uh, uh, the mountain on Game of Thrones, and he can't wait. He can't wait to get a stretched butthole. And he, you know, this guy's got his dumb looking pin. He's like, "What the fuck? How can this possibly be? You got to get Panuma." This man, the six foot seven dude, says. I've got a foreign object in, in a very sensitive part of my body. And my body is pissed about it, he said. Then he says, it doesn't bend. It feels like a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <coughs> His penis no longer hangs the way it used to. Quote, imagine the head of the penis is a clock. And they put an implant in at 12. Well, mine is at 11 or 10. Uh, before getting Panuma last May, James, a 36-year-old Nevada trader. Nevada? Nevada. I don't know. Had an average size penis, about five and a quarter inches when erect. But he wanted to be a little bigger. After reading about Panuma and GQ and watching video of the surgery online, he said he felt that he was in good hands with E-List. Man, if I watch that surgery, I would be so on the floor. I would vagal out so quick. Uh, same thing. Incredible pain. When he woke up with his usual morning erection, it felt as if someone had, quote, jammed a red hot ice pick down my urethra. <laughs> he said the at Elis office told him that's normal. Three days after the procedure, James had his bandages removed. He noticed protuberances bulging out of both the sides of his penile shaft. He said Elis office told him this too was normal. Then he discovered he had zero sensation at the top of the shaft when erect. He pinched himself hard just to make sure. Nada. James officially panicked when a seroma grew so big that he developed what's colloquially, how do you say that? Collo colloquially, is that right? Called penguin dick. Picture a disproportionately huge shav with a tiny little head. <laughs> In September, James had... Uh, Brant, another urologist from Salt Lake City, who fixed his penile augmentations, removed the implant. After the removal, he discovered his pe penis was now smaller. Three inches when erect. That destroyed me, he said. I went to a dark place. Thanks to a penile stretcher, his penis is now three and a half inches when erect. But sex is problematic, he said, because of a painful, drastic upward curve and scar tissue left over after the surgery. Oh, no. So the article goes on to explain more painful complications. And it's like, this just does not seem worth it. Don't do it. Don't leave your penis alone. My God. The article's titled The Big Short. How does one extend the penis like that?
Kenny adds, Amanda is probably telling someone all about the college girls hockey team at the McDonald's drive through speaker. And they're just like, miss, can I take your order or what? Yeah, that was, that was bad for weeks now. She's been going out of her way to talk about lesbian hockey. And I know why she's doing it. She's doing it so that I'll do what I did. At least I think. Because she can't possibly. Because I think Amanda actually is not stupid. I don't think she's unintelligent. She has to be doing it thinking that me making fun of her is, quote, for the show. She's pulling the old boring D. So if that's your goal, well, congrats. But, you know, I mean, it's just a horrible thing. I mean, even the parents that are there don't really care about it. The moms and dads just want to probably participate in the lesbian action. So I'm thinking that that is what you're doing. I'm thinking you might be in the lesbian gangbang that's going on. The big... Uh, group sex event and perhaps you might be involved in that in some way i don't know i'm just i'm just glad it's over frankly i couldn't take any more of her talking about lesbian youth hockey or whatever it is so dumb the worst thing ever you know these people, these stupid people drive all the way across the United States and they go into an arena and there's no one in it. And by the time the middle of the game happens, there's still no one in the arena. You would draw more people if um, inside of the venue you were giving away like a free AIDS like people come in and then you just inject them with AIDS. More people would be interested in that than actually uh, watching the stupid hockey game. People get more enjoyment out of watching 9-11 jumpers than watching horrible lesbian hockey. I've laughed harder at Schindler's List, the film, during the gas chamber scenes. I've had more enjoyment out of watching those than watching girls hockey. There are people who've experienced the horror of a miscarriage who said that those events were more enjoyable than what you're doing this weekend. That's how terrible of an event uh, that you're going to is. It's the absolute, it's the absolute worst. Corey says only hot lesbians are acceptable. And, and uh, you know, they're not. These are all beefy women. Tyler says, I would rather receive the Iron Man dick device than watch the CMU women's hockey team. We are moments away from Kyle being joined by Kyle for another edition of Let's Kill. Stand by. If you like the free podcast, you will love listener supported ad free Patreon. Hang on. Oh my God. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. 
Ben and Eric tonight at 7 p.m. Who Are These Zanes is released Saturday morning at midnight. Well, Saturday at 12. So this Friday turns into Saturday. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. No matter where you are in the U.S., reach out to Mario for a mortgage. Whether you're getting money out of your home to pay off uh, credit card bills, maybe go on a vacation, maybe travel across the country to see a bunch of stupid, unathletic women play hockey, whatever. Uh, reach out to Mario. Whether it's your first mortgage, your 10th, 30-year fix you got your eyes on, or a 15-year fixed, you got to go fixed, man. Yeah, variable rates are, are scams, for fuck's sake. Uh, reach out to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. NMLS number 3035-231-332-6505. I got a heating and cooling dude. Well, more than a dude. It was a dude when he started. Now he's got a uh, whole crew of employees. All family members. That's why I love them. Family owned, family run, A and E, heating and cooling. Reach out to A and E Heating and Cooling 616 516 8579 today. Whether it's an after hour service call, whether it's scheduled maintenance, whether you're getting a new furnace or AC unit installed, call A and E Heating and Cooling. Do your diligence. Go ahead. Call on a couple other companies that will try to scam you, get estimates from them on whatever it is you want done. And then call Joe. He will be lower. One of the things he likes to encourage you to do is get your furnace and AC units tuned up once per year. So you will see him twice a year. Once uh, those units are tuned and running fine, uh, they'll be running at peak efficiency. And Joe has a knack for being able to look into the crystal ball and determine how much time you have left till that thing croaks. He got an old, my old uh, uh, furnace, which is old as fuck, running at 89% efficiency. Out of the box, they're about 96, so that's pretty great. 616-516-8579. When your furnace is running at peak efficiency, it doesn't work as hard. It doesn't burn as much fuel, which saves you money. Call Joe, 616-516-8579. I got an accountant that I want you to call, Tag Accounting. That is the tax hobbit, Troy Ginzer, 616-301-9516. Call to get your taxes done by him. Support the sponsors that support this show, 616-301-9516. Anywhere in the U.S. too. So call. Christina will pick it up and say, hey, Eric Zane sent me. I want Troy to do my taxes. All right, get on that. And before I get into uh, calling Kyle here for another edition of Let's Kill, Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, 616-532-6600. Love them so much. The best. They get star in the forehead for customer service for doing what they did for my beloved son-in-law. This past weekend, and they wanted to make doubly sure that I uh, I talked about it because so you know, you know, when it went down, he got some work done on the car. It didn't run right after he brought it home for whatever reason. Does we don't know why? What we don't know if it was something missed or something in addition happened to the car that was unbeknownst unknown prior to. They didn't care. They said, "Oh, bring it back," and we're paying for the towing and we're fixing it because we don't want you wondering what the problem was so we're going to fix that free of charge and for your trouble just in case we're giving you a 200 hundred dollar credit for the next time you come to irvine's auto repair grand rapids hybrid and ev that my friends is why they have a nearly five star rating on their google reviews irvines.com ervines.com to see for yourself 616-532-6600. 616-532-6600. The best. Man, tell you what, they continue to impress me. 
Love them so much. And the best coffee maker in town. They're on 44th Street, right in the middle of Grand Rapids, about three blocks east of 131. The street they're off of is called Stafford. So 44th Street, Stafford, 150 yards. There they are on the west side of the street. This man has become an absolute institution on the show. The almighty Kyle. Alexander. Yo, yo, what's up? Oh, uh, you know, I was just telling it, Doug. I was just telling everybody how I remember when I first started talking to you. And um, now everybody, like, loves to hear you. In fact, if I didn't reach out to you, that's a concern. Uh-huh. Yeah, you've won. I don't know. Well, first of all, it's really weird how people are fickle. Like if they hear something that they haven't heard before, they their 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 default is to hate it, and then they like come around. You know? Yeah. Have you ever done that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Wait, 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 wait. Do you mean like I was on the fickle side, or I was the receiver of fickality? You were the receiver of fickality from a select number of people, but now. Eric Zane for HelloFresh. You're going to save 60% plus free shipping. Pay attention. Here are the options for you. Take the family out to eat, and then you're bankrupt by the end of the month. That's out. Uh, Okay, I'm going to plan a bunch of meals. I'm going to do research, hours on end, go to the store, buy all this stuff. Somebody's going to crash into my car. I'm going to get home. Nobody's going to like it because I didn't do the recipe right. The instructions weren't clear. It goes to waste in the fridge, blow even more money. And then everybody thinks you're a terrible preparer of meals. Or, or you can call upon America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. I would just like you to try this. You know, I mean, we go way back, you and I. So just try this just once. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Zane60. And then you'll use the code ZANE60 for 60% off plus free shipping. So the box comes to your door after you make the various checks of what you like and and how much food you actually want to get. And then let it uh, play out. It comes to your door. The instructions are perfect. They're on individual cards. All of the portions are measured so that nothing goes to waste. You plate the food, you pass it along to the family at the table, and they're like, this is fantastic. I am not kidding you. It is a life game changer. HelloFresh. Again, you go to HelloFresh.com slash Zane60 and use the code Zane60, and that's 60% off plus free shipping. Now, this offer does not last forever, so now is the perfect time. As I'm talking to you, log on, do it, sign up, and then get ready to have some fun and be admired by your family and friends. And make sure you tell me how it goes. Reach out to me on email or whatever. Scream at me when I'm running down the street and tell me that I was right because I am right. HelloFresh is fantastic. I swear by it. I love these folks. HelloFresh.com slash Zane 60 and use the code Zane 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. They didn't become America's number one meal kit by doing anything other than being the best. Thank you. Hello fresh. There's no fecality period. Yeah, I know. I've, uh, I've been subject to fecality for mo- most of my life. I got a weird sense of humor. You know what I mean? Kind of a, a strange little personality. So sometimes, um, well, I, I, on average, I'd say people, people, we get along. But, like, sometimes, um, like, in middle school, uh, my middle school was broken up into, like, uh, like the grades. And then there was, like, A and B, right? So you were, like, broken yeah. up into two sections. Right. And um, you, you didn't really have many classes with the other side, but, like, you kind of crossed over sometimes. And uh, in middle school, I was always, like, the class clown of one side, and then there was this other dude who was class clown of the other side. Okay. And we, ha- we had, like, a, like a battle of uh, uh, image, I guess you would say, right. where everyone was like, oh, man, who's, who's the funnier one? But, um, yeah. And we always, like, had, like, a little, not animosity, but, like, you know how it goes. Yeah, rivalry. Anyway, we, 
You're having like a yeah. rivalry over popularity. You're like, I'm definitely funner, funnier than that, than that asshole. Oh, for sure. And uh, but no, we uh, we we became friends eventually, and uh, yeah, we get along. I still see him every once in a while. Did you ever uh, have the moment? And I don't even know if they do this in school, where there's for whatever the activity is in gym class, teams are picked. Like like, hey, oh, yeah. hey, I pick him. And then there's always. Were you ever like the last kid picked? No, uh, I, I always had the, the advantage of I grew like uh, very fast. And you know, I'm I'm about like a foot taller than you or something right. like that. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I, I grew like fast, so I was always like taller earlier. So in any any sports related activities, I was generally one of the first ones picked. You could always see a little part of someone who's picked last, a little part of their soul leave their body. And uh, with the amount of uh, uh, embarrassment, it's like you could, it's almost like that's where school shooters were born. I know. I was just thinking that in my head. I was like, school shooters, for sure. <laughs> right. And, and I blame the dumb fuck adults. You know, I, I, I would bet right now in schools that they don't do that, that that is frowned upon. Oh, yeah. These days, it's probably like, oh, everybody's on the same team. And, uh, yeah, which actually, you know, I guess I kind of, I don't get it, actually, but I do kind of get it because, like, oh, yeah, it, I get when, it. When you're picking teams and stuff like that, it's almost like the, the adults, the teachers are like, Hey, get ready for the real world where uh, right. you're going to be either a, a Republican or a Democrat. Yeah. Out. <laughs> well, I'm 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 like if I was a teacher, I would I would want to make the teams myself for sheer survival. Because if you were to like say, all right, then then the fat fuck doesn't get picked. You know, he's gonna he's gonna drive his car into the front door of the school and kill everybody. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Back in back in my heyday, like the '90s, early 2000s. I mean. Obviously, there was Columbine back in the day, but it was less less frequent. Probably people right. weren't thinking about. But yeah, these days it's like you make a wrong move and everybody's dead. Right, right. I mean, it was wonderful back in the day because I remember this fat dude, Mike Phillips. He didn't get picked, and he got picked last, and then he was horrible. So then we'd beat the shit out of him at uh, and play smear the queer at lunchtime, and then he would <laughs> he would he could handle it though, you know. Back then, all they do is just cry and go home. And and nowadays, they either throw themselves off a building, or they bring you know an M60 to school. Uh, <laughs> for sure, I will say uh, back in my day though, the uh, we we were like right on the tail end of Smear the Queer because like uh, we like would play it like based off what we knew from our parents yeah then like the teachers would be like you can't say that you can't say queer Mm -hmm. and so we uh, i can't fuck i can't remember what we had to change it to but three of the queer became a a different name um event it's the same concept obviously but oh yeah we weren't allowed to say it so we used we used to yell n-word pile (laughs) oh yeah and the teacher they didn't care and then, like just, some someone, their they didn't care. They would, and then we'd come in, and then a kid would like get a broken arm or a broken neck or something, and then the teacher would be like, "All right, we got a problem." And then we we think he's gonna bust us for what we called it, and he would say, "No more playing," and he'd say, "N word pile." No more N word pile. He'd actually say it. <laughs> I will say, get, get a lot of this. This is like the end of the Wild West days. Fucking in elementary school, I'm talking like, this was probably fourth grade or fifth grade. I think fourth grade. Um, yeah, it was fourth grade. There was a girl, um, Dominique, I think. Yeah, that was her name. Uh, she was like kind of like a tomboy or whatever, but like pretty big. Because, you know, a lot of the girls grow, grow yeah, taller quicker. Yeah, right on, yeah. She wanted to play football with us, and we, we were, for some reason, we were allowed to play tackle football at recess. Oh, yeah. And uh, so she wanted to play. We're like, all right, like that, that's up to you. And uh, so she played with us, and we fucking tackled her, and she got hurt, of course, and then, like, cried and complained to the principal, and we had to have a fucking assembly, and the principal was like, no more tackle football, people get hurt out there, and we're like, oh, come on, Dominique, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, we used to, I'm telling you, I'm with you, we did this, and I, I, I say this not to, like, I'm proud, but if we had any of those girls who thought they were tough shit because they were bigger than all the dudes... When we tackle them, we would then grab their tits when they're down there. 
So there was all <laughs> sorts of sexual assault happening. N words, sexual assault, smear the queer, beat the shit out of the nerd. Oh my God. It was absolutely the Wild West, like you said. Oh, first, absolutely. I'm right there with you. It was horrible. It was unbelievable. Now, can you imagine if on the news today that happened, or if that happened today, you'd see on TV8 sexual assault at uh, at Godfrey uh, Middle School as uh, a girl is sex her tits were. I mean, it would be terrible. It would be the end of the school would explode. Oh, for sure. And you, you know, like th- that story for some reason, uh, just based on entertainment value, that story would get probably like 10 minutes of airtime as well just for a tackle football game oh my god yes it'd be it'd be unbelievable it can never happen again never (laughs) well anyway um what what's going on in your world kyle i I gotta tell you this this just happened this morning fucking jameson is uh he's at that age where uh, shit gets wild so we were, um, it was like, I was getting ready for work and everything. And it was like darker in the room. And of course he's off and ready to party. So, um, all of a sudden he's like, uh, he does this thing where he hates, uh, when he has boogers. So he'll just come up and be like, bug. And then like, want you to like get the booger off of his hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which happens. But anyways, so he was like running around or whatever. And he came up to me and said, bug, um, which is fine or whatever. So I go to get it off his hand and I was like. Well, fuck, dude, this don't feel like a bug. And uh, I, like, gr- uh, I, like, look at my hand and give it a little smell. It was shit. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. So then I, I, like, look, I'm, like, it's, like, on his hands. And I'm, like, oh, no. <laughs> so I look down by his diaper, and there's, like, a little bit leaking out. Yeah. And so I, I'm, like, fuck. So I flip on the lights, and there's just shit. I mean, there's shit, like, a little bit on the bed. There's some on the floor. And I'm, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. fuck, dude. <laughs> So that was uh, that was my morning. Yeah, yeah. You gotta teach him the word shit, <laughs> so that he's walking yeah, around. Yeah. You got. I, I I want video of him walking up to you in blue, going shit, shit. <laughs> he, he does do it too. We uh, me and blue. You know, she's always like, you know, we gotta we gotta not swear around him because this kid. I mean, he's like speaking sentences. You know, he. He, he'll copy it. He'll do your thing. And so we say we say we're not going to do it, but we do. Oh, yeah. And then, like, something will happen, and, like, either me or Blue will be like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. And he'll be like, and he'll be like fuck. You know what I mean? And, uh, and shit is one of them because, you know, shit is a word that comes out of our mouth for sure. And, he, and then he just goes, oh, shit. Because he's got That's a little good. list going that is, on. That is <laughs> excellent. That is excellent. And you need to encourage that. And then teach him more words so that, because what's going to happen here is that's going to lead to hilarity. Now, eventually, when he gets old enough where you can like, no, 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 don't say those words, then you can untrain him. But you got to increase it. Drop like motherfucker and and fuck you and suck my dick in there. I'm right there, I'm right there with you. It's like that like aligns with my personal values all the way. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I mean, because if you're walking through Target, and and you know someone and you see somebody who you know is a fucking moron and if you said it you'd be in trouble but if the kid goes fuck you i mean you can just say <laughs> jameson and then the guy's like holy shit oh my god you know <laughs> the guy's like holy shit <laughs> right no, uh, i would actually uh that would be a good youtube series to be honest with you if you could like kind of somewhat train your kid to do that that'd be the, fucking yes, awesome the swearing child because then half of the country would be mortified with you but that's good that type of attention would get you know you get 80 million views in a minute oh for sure yeah as long as that money's coming in you know whatever i'll, I'll, I'll high five the kid yes absolutely without a doubt i think you're doing the right thing oh my god <laughs> that is you know um i was gonna say something else about um about kids um Oh, is that the first time you've been exposed to feces? That can't be right. You've had to you had to have touched his feces many times uh, at at this point in the game, right? Oh yeah, there's uh, there's been blowouts. There's been um, yeah, there's been tons of shit all over the place. This one was just the first one where I was misled by the little bastard. Where I'm like, oh, uh, bug, you know, no no big fucking deal, yeah, dude. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, and then I was like, you little bastard. Like, yeah. that's not right. Oh Jesus! I hope that he doesn't get to a point where it's like, you know, hey, dad, bug, and it's like jizz. 
<laughs> yeah, he's just like 13, just saying bug still. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. Ed Boog. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, well, that's that's an incredible story. I'm glad it happened. Yeah, me too, a little bit. Uh, excellent, excellent. All right, uh, what's what's next for us, Kyle? Did you, um, well, obviously, I figured you are going to ask me about the Lions free agency at one point. But before that, I got to say, did you read this story? I saw this uh, this weird story of this fucking 82-year-old guy that got busted for selling uh, fake uh, Michael Jordan cards. No, I didn't know this. What? Yeah, this fucking guy. So um, I guess he did it, like, uh, between, uh, like, 2015 and 2019. So I guess he was, like, a little bit younger. But, I mean, the dude, he's still fucking really old at that point. And so he just, uh, I, I don't know exactly how he did it, but he had some fucking fake cards, I guess. And he, sold, and he made $800,000 in four years. And... Um, it, of course, in the article, they're like, oh, this is a bad guy. Blah, blah. I'm like, no, that's, that's fucking awesome, dude. Oh, I mean, yeah. if, you, if you're that old, you're like, listen, dude, if I'm going out, I'm going out with a bang, dude. No. And I was, you know, yeah. if I was him, I'm like, 800000 bucks. I hope he spent it all, dude. I hope he just fucking lived it up for oh, four yeah. years. Yeah, this is wonderful. Fucking, he's like, whatever, I'm going to prison, whatever, dude. I'm 82. <laughs> this, is, this is really, really great. And the fact that he went this long... Um, with all that money undetected, you know, in a perfect world, he goes undetected and people continue to sell them and the money changes hands for these cards. I mean, who cares? You know, who gives a shit? Right. Oh my God. I mean, it's like, it's, I, I, you know, it's like, oh, it's like, so, yeah, I mean, who knows how many times it changed hands and then like maybe somebody authenticated it or whatever. And they're like, I don't know how, I don't know how an investigation like that would go, but yeah, if I, if he if he stopped doing that in 2019 and it's like four years later now, hell yeah, dude, you did a, you did a pretty good job of hiding it, dude. He sure did. Yeah, I'm I'm curious as to how they were able to determine it. Um, I would say, in my mind, I like to think that he probably spent a hundred thousand dollars on cocaine. Is what I'm thinking he did. Yeah, who knows? Eighty two, Jesus. Um, it says here McNeil defrauded sports memorabilia collectors. Uh, of the more than $800,000 by intentionally misrepresenting the authenticity of the trading cards. He was peddling when, in fact, they were counterfeit, said an FBI. I mean, the this is a federal charge because he's charged with, like, a wire fraud because he sold them online, you know? Uh, and, uh, and, and, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is like a federal investigation. The U.S. attorney is looking. This is a big deal. Um, he said he made bail. Uh, After he was uh, released and uh, he appeared in U.S. District Court in Colorado, he said, I did nothing wrong, he said. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Deciding to comment, they're declining to comment at length. Prosecutors said he will appear in a New York courtroom at a later date. Fuck it. It's worth it. He's 82. Who gives a shit? You know? know. Yeah, why? Why at that point, why even post bail, dude? Just chill. You know what I mean? Chill for a while. Yeah. Get the... Get the free food. No one's going to mess with you. You're 82. And, and just fucking, yeah, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, and the chance that he somehow gets a good lawyer and gets out of it, and you keep that money, dude. Well, yeah, that or jump bail. You know, you you uh, you, you get out of bail, whatever. How much is the bail? 10% of 10000 or whatever. And then fucking go to Honduras or Guatemala and fuck those guys. I got $800,000. Oh um, man, you know what I'm just thinking right now in my head would be a sweet like uh, a legal side gig for like retirement communities, taking those fucking fugitives, dude, and then uh, get uh, like some sort of like law passed where like uh, like federal investigators cannot they cannot there's like immunity in the retirement communities. Oh is yeah, what I like to think uh, it, <laughs> this this is not a problem. This is a this is a, 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 a minor blip, in my opinion. I am I am going to leave. I am taking off. I am a flight risk. Goodbye. <laughs> Love it. Uh, that's a great story. That is awesome. Okay, uh, talking about the Detroit Lions. Now, you and I um, are the most interested that we've been and excited for this team in quite some time. In fact, I would say... Um, of the 43 years that I have followed them, 
I have never been this invested. I've always been like, oh, they're going to suck, you know, and you hope, yeah. ho- hope for the best but expect the worst. However, this year, myself and national experts are all saying lions, lions, lions. So if they fuck it up in this upcoming season, I might throw myself out of a building of a, of a skyscraper. I know, you know, it's it's scary times when your team is good. You know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah, I know. I'm right there with you. But I will say, I'm kind of. I was like uh, trying to investigate the uh, like the moves they made. I like the I like the free agency moves, dude. I like the, the um, although there's a little thing to it. I like the shrewd move with Jamal Williams. You know what I mean? Now. Um- what I know is that they signed a running back who's very good from Chicago. Yeah. Is Williams out for sure? Yeah, yeah. He he signed with another team. It was uh it was a case of uh American uh, imperialism, I would say, by Jamal Williams' agent. Because, like, the Lions, I was reading, like, what really went down, and the Lions, like, offered him the same contract that they offered the guy that they signed and they were like, you know, you got to like, they said like, you got to let us know like pretty quick because it's free agency. You know uh, what okay. I mean? So yeah. we don't want to, we don't want to be like held on a string where like, you know, you kind of jerk us around and then you don't want the deal and you sign with somebody else. And then we have like nobody else to pick. You know what I mean? Like we'll get like slim picking. So they gave him the timeline and he, he missed the timeline because his agent thought they could get more money. And then we fucking signed the guy, and then John Williams was gone, and then he had to sign a shittier deal with the Saints. So <laughs> it, 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 he fucked up. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing right now. Well, um, it, you know, I, I sure liked his spirit, and uh, he was uh, – the I, well, the fans loved him, but I don't think that if you're running a football team, you can base, um, you know, whether or not you sign a guy based on the fans liking him. You're trying to fucking win football games here. And right. so, uh, yeah, that is shrewd. And that also ultimately um, does save the Lions money. And they have a lot of very good running backs on that team, though some of them are can't stay healthy, like Swift. And, in fact, the guy they got from Chicago has a history of getting hurt, too. Um, but when they're healthy, they're very good. So Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it works out. Because, yeah, I mean, that guy we signed is like – in a, in a lot of ways, better than Jamal Williams. Like, when you read the articles, everyone's like, it's, yeah. it's definitely an upgrade. I will say, yeah, I did like Jamal Williams, though, because if if, if, your boy, if your friend Kyle Tiller here was in the NFL, that's what I would be like. Like, I would just be cracking jokes yes. and be like an idiot. Yeah. These, and then, like, you know, post-game, like, post-game interviews, like, people would... They want to ask you the standard questions, and they want like the yeah. standard answers. And I, I would not give them. I would be either cracking jokes or maybe dropping a couple f bombs. Oh yeah, well, whatever. So he's entertaining and nice, and everybody loves him. But that doesn't do shit for winning on the road uh, at Minnesota. Uh, you know, right. I, I, I mean, come on now. Let's 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 be real here. So that's good. They also signed um, this cornerback named Cam Sutton. Um from uh pittsburgh who's fantastic and then we just mentioned david montgomery the running back and then another cornerback from san francisco named emmanuel mosley and he's another very good cornerback he's coming off of an acl but uh that's great i mean so instantly their cornerback position is improved dramatically they re-sign isaiah bugs Anzalone, Matt Nelson, John Kaminsky, Craig Reynolds, one of the running backup running backs. So all these pieces are uh, are working and working in now. Yeah, and I like it because uh, obviously you know the corners were somewhat. I mean, our defensive line is obviously only going to get better because a lot of our production came from the rookies. So we're, I think the defensive line is going to be better, and we might even draft another motherfucker. Who knows? Right. That's yeah, the thing. We, these corners, if they do what they're supposed to do, and we, and our defense could be fucking solid, dude. Right. And, and they, um, uh, not to mention, I, Craig Reynolds is like is undervalued in my opinion. Like he does. I mean, he's like a powerful dude, so he's gonna do what Jamal Williams does anyways. And like, whenever you see Craig Williams enter the game, like or not Craig Williams, Craig, uh, Reynolds. Craig Reynolds enter the game. I mean, the guy's gonna get like like five or six yards every time. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm cool with it. 
They've got four strong backs. Reynolds, Swift when he's healthy, Justin Jackson, and then David Montgomery now. So, all right, there you go. And the thing is, they didn't overpay for Montgomery, and they didn't overpay for Mosley and Sutton. So what that means is they still have cash. I like that these players are seeking out Detroit because they know they're on the upswing, which is what a lot of people predicted would happen. And then yeah. now it opens up the door since they have shored up the defensive backfield to draft a line, a lot, another stellar lineman or linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. Linebacker would be nice. Um, I know we would re-signed Anzalone, but another, I, we need like a, like another little fast guy in there or a thumper. Right. Or well, the yeah. Well, Anzalone sometimes becomes retarded. Yeah. So when that happens, you know, I mean, you, you, that could happen at any point. I'm right. I'm I'm 100 right there with you. All right. Uh, okay, buddy. That's uh, that's all I got on the lines. You got anything else to finish up? You doing anything fun this weekend? Um, fucking probably, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, <laughs> you know me. I, I don't yeah. ever know what's going on in the schedule. All right. But, well, um, yeah. You know, I'm just gonna live my life this weekend. All right, good deal. Take care of yourself. Say hi to Blue for me. Say hi to uh, 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 everybody over at Dumpster Divers. I send them my best. And, yeah, that's it. I wish I wish you uh, the best. Have a good, safe weekend. All right. Hell, yeah. I love you guys. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you. Deucey. Yeah, there you go. Kyle uh, with another edition of Let's Kill. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, I didn't know till he said it that they had lost um, – Williams, the guy he uh, led the he led the NFL in touchdowns this year. He had like seventeen, a lot of short yardage runs, um, and just a wonderful spirit. But that's interesting. How uh, they said, "Yeah, you got to sign, you got to get it done," and he it didn't work out. So that he ends up uh, taking less money. Um, so that's a bummer. But that's how it goes. Lions will quickly forget. Lions fans will quickly forget the first time uh, Williams carries a ball and busts one for like 35 or 40. I'm sorry, Williams. Montgomery. David Montgomery from the Chicago Bears. All right. Sam the Jew says Montgomery was healthier than Williams or Swift last year. Okay. And Bobby Wagner would be an awesome sign. I don't know who that is. All right, Sam, why are you not like subscribed? You're a you're a longtime fan. You're 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 an ally. You got to subscribe. You have uh, Amazon Prime, don't you? You you get this free. Do you not shop with Amazon Prime? It's like the best thing in the world. You actually save money when you shop with Amazon Prime. I don't understand why anybody would not utilize Amazon Prime. You pay them whatever, how much it is a year, and then you buy the stuff. When you have Prime, the shipping's free. I don't I don't understand why anyone would not do that. I have to be careful. Sam says you don't need Prime for free shipping anymore. Oh, is that true? I didn't know that. Spend 25 and you get free shipping. All right, well, maybe it's just not for you. No more about it than I do. That's for damn sure. But do you know about women's hockey? That's That's the big question. Okay, we covered penis enlargement. Did we cover road rage? Nashville, Tennessee. So if you're a listener in that area, you 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 know this face. Josh says, I'm with Sam. I give you my money directly through Patreon. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're very kind. Sam is too. Bob says Prime gets you next day, two day for free, though. Aha, that's that's the thing. 
Kyle says, I want to hear about women's hockey and scissoring and lesing out. Yeah, no. No. We've we've discussed it enough. Just know it's going to happen. And Amanda will be there encouraging the girls to chow muff. This is the face of a man who would throw an 80-year-old woman into uh, into traffic. This guy. This is the road rager. My God. Great question. Seabear495. Says Eric Zane, when was the last time you got pissed in a road rage incident? I could not tell you. There was a moment, though, when I pulled into a, uh, I was at an intersection in downtown Grand Rapids. I come to a stop. And then the people that go across the street. It's my turn to go. Okay. I come to a stop. And then this guy who's going to cross in front of me comes to a stop. My turn. I start to go. And he goes right in fucking front of me. And I lay on the horn. And he looks at me confused. Diana says, why did you do that? I go, fuck for my turn four-way stop she goes asshole this is not a four-way stop you are at a red light he is at a green light and i went oh (laughs) god it's the worst how embarrassing is that i wanted to i wanted to catch up to the guy and go i'm so sorry (coughs) <coughs> excuse me no I can't remember I, I I keep a low profile I don't uh, if someone does anything um, like that to me cuts me off I just give them more distance let them go go on I don't have time for you um, when people I, I normally don't drive even one mile over the speed limit. A lot of the time I'm under the speed limit. So quite frequently I will be driving and all of a sudden my rear view mirror is full of the front end of the vehicle behind me. And um, so I, I, I get over into the next lane. I mean, these aren't on freeway roads or interstate roads. These are city streets where it's not the same rules like pass on the left, slow cars on the right. But I I do that to get out of their way because they're aggressively right on my tail. And they hate me. So I want to be out of their way as much as possible. I'm frequently looking in my rearview mirror, and if I see someone even starting to get close and I have the ability to get out of their way, I will. And then when I'm traveling... I keep such a space in between me and the car in front of me that everybody gets pissed. Now, I'm going the same speed as the car in front of me, but they don't like that. So I've had people behind me pass me, and then about 50, 100, 200 meters later, they break and make a right-hand turn, saving them about half a second. It's that bad. Nikki says driving through GR was so scary. The interstate or whatever it is there, I was going 70 and people were flying past me at probably 90 miles an hour. I like being in Wyoming, Michigan better. People cutting you off only to stop and turn. Jerks. Yeah. Yeah. The interstate system in GR makes no sense. Oh, you're not kidding. These Pollocks and Dutch morons were completely uh, not in touch with how the world works. There's a lot of these 
exit left, exit right, uh, merge here to get off there. To, oh, it's just a absolute abortion. And one of the other problems is, you know, um, every year, like every inch of interstate has to be replaced because of the uh, the saw, the freeze, the thaw, the uh, roads buckling all over, the bridges collapsing. It's just shit. You are not kidding. You people are 100% right on this. Kenny says you can't even accurately describe it. You just have to be there to experience. And then there's one lane construction and people drive the wrong way in the middle of the night. (laughs) Oh, another wrong way driver. They're not even drunk. They just wind up going the wrong way. Kill a family of five. Bob says Philadelphia and New Jersey are the worst to drive in. Disagree. I've been there. I used to live there. Not at all the worst. Uh, In fact, perfect compared to Michigan. Uh, All right. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I keep like wanting. Okay. I was talking about road rage guy in Nashville. So the guy. Okay. These two people, a man and a woman. We're driving. And um, what I was just describing to you happened. This dude, Billy Johnson, was uh, tailgating. He, like, got up in front of him. He's swerving. He doesn't like what the people in front of him are doing. What is it about people when they get behind a wheel? They could be mild-mannered and... A normal individual. But if they get behind the wheel of a car, they turn into absolute monsters, psychopaths, doing things that they would never do if they weren't behind the wheel of a car. If they're at a grocery store with a cart, they're not going to act like that. But for some reason, you get someone behind the wheel of a car. They are a menace. The dude in the car said that Billy Johnson was about to rear end them when he came to a red light. Billy Johnson got out of the vehicle and approached the victim's car with a flashlight and began banging on the window. The dude got out of the car and they began arguing. The elderly lady, 80, gets up the car, it gets out of the car, and she's like, boys, boys, stop, stop. You go in your car, and you go in your car, and we'll go our separate ways. She's, she's making sense. This is who you want to listen to. Billy Johnson then turns on the woman and picks her up like the Hulk and throws her into the opposite lane of traffic. Her head is the first thing that hits the ground. She was transported to Skyline Medical Center. Her uh, head is bleeding internally, so it's, it's like bleeding on the brain. This poor old lady is in intensive care with severe head trauma. I mean, this is an attempted murder charge at this point. He sped off after that. Witnesses saw everything. They tracked down Billy Johnson and arrested him at his home. He's charged with vandalism. (laughs) There's more to that. He's charged with vandalism, $1,000 or less. Obstruction of a passageway. Aggravated assault. That's the big one. Uh, Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And aggravated, what's the flashlight? And aggravated assault with serious injury. He's due in court on March 31. 
Oh my God. Man. That then this is the dude. He's got that smug beer smirk going. That's the same face free beer has when they take publicity photos. Josh says what I was thinking. That that dude is full on Michael Douglas falling down. Yes. Oh my God, you're exactly. He looks look just like him. So then, you know that this court case is going to start the arraignment or whatever, due in court at the end of March. That's that's when he's going to be like. Uh, <laughs> Sam says, "Is this guy dating an 18 year old girl?" He looks like Jared. You guys are actually doing a... uh, Thank you, Sam. Sam just subscribed. Um, You guys are actually fairly good at writing. Some of the jokes that uh, uh, some of you write are are excellent. You're very good at it. That's just good writing is what that is. That's, you know, taking shit that we all know about and writing good jokes. Kenny says, you bully talked Sam into subscribing. Very cool. So that's the type of thing where at the at the uh, at the first hearing he's going to be like, oh, "Your Honor, I I don't know, I I I you know." He's going to come back to the pack. He's gonna he's gonna feel terrible about what he did. But this is why you need laws. This is why you need punishment. My God, he needs to be locked away for a long amount of time. Bob says most people just suck at driving and rage at anything. The shit I see on a daily basis while I'm out here delivering people's, uh, I guess that's FedEx packages. I don't doubt it, man. You got to give people a break. You know who you really want to give a break to is when you're driving down like a surface street in whatever community, not the interstate, and you see FedEx, UPS, whatever driver who just puts the car in the right lane to run to deliver the package. Okay. That's the guy you do not want to fuck with. Okay. These people are on the edge. They get so much shit. And these are people we have to have in the workforce. We must just wait. Just wait. If everybody's getting over and you can't get over, it's okay. No big deal. Lay low, take a break, look at your phone, whatever. Just be patient. Be polite and treat the person on a uh, pedal bike, a bicycle, the same way. You might have to wait. It's going to be okay, though. You don't want anybody dying. You don't want to upset the FedEx guy. They're already about to snap. Truck drivers, same thing. When they do the maneuver where the one truck is passing the other and the one that he's passing is going 65 miles an hour and the trucker is doing six, who's passing is doing 65 and one uh, quarter miles an hour and it takes 70 or 80 miles for the trucker to make the pass. Lay low. Relax. Just stay behind the one in the right. Get the great gas mileage because you're drafting. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Yes, there's 35 miles of traffic behind. They're all dickheads. Let them go. We're all on the same team. We got to have these derelict, dumb fuck truckers delivering our shit. If we piss them off, they will not do the job that everyone needs them to do. I'm only busting. I'm just trolling. Relax. Draft through the turn and then slingshot past him. Kyle says, in that case, it's okay to flip them off. Move, slow fuck. 
That shipment can wait. Kyle might be one of the most aggressive audience members we have. Chris says FedEx driver took out a telephone pole a couple of weeks ago outside of my friend's work. He was arrested for drunk driving. <coughs> Stand by. All right. Anyway, uh, that guy is going to get punished. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday I sold a t-shirt to someone and I think a sticker. I'm not sure. I know I made uh, 250 on the shirt. Okay, it says, congrats, you've made a, sh- uh, a, a sale. A shale. Yeah, one sticker with a logo design went and uh, I don't know what I charge for those, but I got 50 cents. Thank you. And someone bought a t-shirt, the same person, I think. And uh, they dropped 250 into my love bucket. So thank you. That makes me happy. And it doesn't really make me happy about the uh, meager amount of money. That's not the point. The point is uh, people are wearing your gear. They're promoting you. That's the point. That's why I do this. So what you do is you go to ericzaneshow.com and you click on merch. Now, right now, there is not a sale. When there is, I'll let you know. Here's today's shirt of the day. That is a piece of art similar to what is over my shoulder. It's the comic book page. John, the psycho magician in Nashville. This is his artwork. It's a comic book. Eric Zane is the podcaster. And it's me with a combination of several Marvel characters. Iron Man his gear along with captain America's gear. And what, instead of Thor's hammer, it's a microphone. It's got the eighties font, the podcaster. And then it says they kept firing him. So he fired back. I like how the logo of the comic book, um, deal blends with the color of the black t-shirt there's uh an asphalt color there's the black t-shirt and you can choose from any one of these colors and as i've said you can uh, it's for a dude you can click on female cut and all the different styles and just 22 dollars plus shipping now they don't charge you shipping if you get four t-shirts because it's more than 80 bucks so that's cool because the shipping is way overpriced. I don't know what it is for the cost of the shipping because I don't buy them. But if some of you know what they actually charge you in shipping, I would love to know that. I don't know if it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. And you can get all of these different products with the podcaster logo. This is something that no one will buy a mask. Okay. But there's all sorts of shit you can buy. All right. Thank you for listening to me sell my shit. Uh, Stevie, uh, Stevie says, see how I didn't say anything this time? Because I think one time she said, yeah, it's 20 bucks shipping. But that that's not true. She was just being a smart ass. Which, you know, if anyone was on the fence about buying it, If they saw Stevie's comment, they then would not purchase it, which is why I said to her, don't do that. And she said, oopsie, sorry. No, you're fine. You learn. You said you're learning. If, and she says it was a joke. Of course it was a joke, but no one knows that. Of course not. Kenny... Wants to get in trouble. 
says, it's funny how Eric gets mad at us for being like him. Yeah, but you're not the Eric Zane Show podcast. You are you. You see? Your job is to absorb the material, write a funny joke from time to time. You see, now you guys are going to get in the weeds. You can't do that. You don't want to be in Amanda's world right now. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you to the Kent County Health Department. Love them so much. Um, if you are in Kent County or in whatever county you live in, that you can take advantage of these things too because it's kind of like across the board. But if you uh, or someone you know or love has a, a child who has not been appropriately immunized, um, you need those immunizations. Measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, pertussis, meningitis. Uh, Gardasil, which keeps a young person at an early age um, immune from cervical cancer. You have to get this. This is not negotiable. Okay? You have to do these things. Um, You can get the immunizations for little or no cost. Perhaps at the early stages of the child's life, these things never happen for whatever reason. Uh, You can't let it go. You You gotta do it. So, Uh, Reach out to the Kent County Health Department, 616-632-7200 for more information or just go to the website, accesskent.com slash health. Thank you to them for letting me talk about their initiatives. All right. While I'm at it, Blue Frost IT. If you have a small or a medium sized business and you come to a point where, uh, what is running the tech, which every business that exists runs on tech. If yours is old, slow, out of date, malfunctioning, it might be time for new tech. And then you're like, what the hell do I get? Do I just wander into Best Buy and have some dude sell me something off the shelf? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That puts you in a spot where you're buying something you don't need or not enough computing, too much computing, you're overpaying. Sit down with Blue Frost IT for a 30-minute complimentary consultation. Face-to-face. Nice guy named Alan. Alan will take you through all the things you need after he asks you some basic questions about what it is you do in your business. It could be restaurant business, uh, merchandise, whatever. Uh, Reach out to Alan at Blue Frost IT, 616-285-50. On today's Patreon, I need to break down with you the maneuver Nike is doing To be more humane to animals. I want to see if any of you um, can figure this out. Now, if you've seen the story, I'm respectfully uh, asking you not to guess here. I want to see if anyone can figure it out. But Nike is agreeing to no longer use hides from a certain animal that they use on high-end soccer cleats, like the upper, the the the, the part that the uh, uh, laces go through and surround the top part of the foot. Expensive Nike soccer cleats are made from the hides of what animal? I was like, add me to the list of people who had no idea that this was a thing. You've heard about uh, uh, cowhide being used in products that we all wear. Now, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, they they gotta stop. But then I'm like, well, that's absolutely hypocritical. Animals uh, 
make wonderful clothes. That sounds terrible. But look around your room. And there's animal everywhere. Animals used for clothing. You are 100% hypocrite. If you object to any animal being used to help us stay warm and look good. I don't care what the animal is. Like, for example, like minks. A mink coat is fucking awesome. They're soft as shit. They're warm. Chicks look hot in them. And it's a status symbol. If you've earned a ton of cash in your life, yes, you want the world to know it. You're going to walk around in a $40,000 coat made from cute shit. And that's the end of it. Like that scene in Goodfellas when uh, Carbone comes in and his wife's got the fucking coat on after the, uh, after the Lufthansa heist. And Jimmy the Gent goes, what the fuck? I told you, no, don't buy anything. He rips it off the chicken. Take it back. Anybody who says minks should not be worn is a hypocrite. Shut up. Especially if you got a wife who can pull this look off. Where she's like nude and she just shows up in the bedroom wearing just the coat opened up where you can see side titty. Aram says minks should not be worn. Why? Why not? Do you have shoes made from animal? What is the difference? One of you has correctly guessed it. And I think Paul might even play soccer. Paul not subscribed. Josh not subscribed. Um, Kangaroo. That's exactly right. Kangaroo. Aram says, minks are not a byproduct from food processing. So what? Which in itself sucks. There are plenty of places that slaughter cows just for their hides. Happens all the time. I'm merely suggesting that the objection to wearing mink is hypocritical. If you wear, if you have any type of product in your home that comes from an animal, you would have to live a life where no animal is harmed in your consumption. If you live a life where animals aren't consumed in any way, shape or form, then you are then out of a glass house there is no argument that no, that is not a faulty argument. That is a thoroughly accurate argument. How can it not be? What? Tell me what the difference is. Perhaps I'm getting it wrong. It's a great argument. I can't say that I, I would. I mean, I'd feel bad too. I wouldn't do it. But I'm a hypocrite too. That, my friend, is a fact. Aram says I'm missing the point. That's not true. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you in to try to defend this because through text, you're 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 just it, you're doing a horrible job. There is no way that you can say that.
He says, don't call me. I'm busy. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Never mind. Yeah, he's probably not doing anything. He just knows I'm right. I mean, I wouldn't wear a mink. I wouldn't wear a mink. But I'm a hypocrite, too. And so is Aaron. Walks around. He's got leather shoes. He's got uh, tons of animal products in his home. But he says, don't, you can't wear mink. Why? No, yeah, you, you can. In fact, you'd be more true to yourself if you did, since you're busy slaughtering animals all the time. Aram says, put me on the payroll and I'll answer. No, I don't, I don't pay people to defend their dumb points. That would be silly. I would owe uh, Kenny $8 million. No, no. Doesn't work that way. Nick says vegans don't realize how many animals die during vegetable production. Oh, my God. I tell you what. You go to any field after, they, uh, after all the soy is processed or the, uh, or the corn... Uh, it's it looks like fucking Dachau. It's it's loaded with animal parts. It's incredible. There's piles, burning carcasses everywhere. What's that smell? It's it's uh, the wildlife burning. It's true. Nick says I had to pull. A mangled deer out of a hay bine. Oh. You've done so much in your life. My God. You've had to uh, uh, restore the, the, the hooves on, on cows. You've had to pull mangled deers, deer out of, out of a hay bine. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the asshole of the day. Asshole of the day. Yeah. Asshole of the day. Uh-uh. Asshole of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asshole of the day. Positive COVID test changes our party plans for Meathead. The banks are in peril. Everybody's withdrawing their money. I made a Facebook post about joining me for the uh, West Michigan Ironman game. Penis issues for some dumb guy who's not comfortable with the curve of his penis. Uh, on the Patreon, I need to tell you the story about the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Tennessee. Oh, man. Isn't there a uh, that saying, he doth protest too much? And uh, I'm probably getting that wrong, but it, the idea there is people who um, say... Uh, complain about gay people and whatever. That's always the gay guy, you know? The lieutenant governor of Tennessee is in that type of hot water. And wait till you hear this. It's so fantastic. I love it when this happens. This happened to that dude from Minnesota who was like trying to make it so that gay was illegal. And then I think he in the uh, airport restroom, he was caught like sucking dick or something like that. Oh my God. Isn't fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to say the road rager, the guy who threw the 80 year old uh, lady into traffic. Brought to you by TC Paintball. There you go. Oh my God, the asshole of the day happens again. Another fantastic asshole of the day award winner after Joe Moss wins it two days in a row. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. And I'm so thankful that you've been here to enjoy it, except for Amanda. I am not thankful for Amanda showing up, not really listening to anything, and just spewing all of this garbage about the dumb fuck lesbian hockey team 
the local stupid, ugly women participating in the dumb lesbian hockey game. I hope I never hear about the stupid hockey game again. I'll talk to you folks who are subscribed on Patreon. To the I'll talk to you tonight at 7 on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Holy shit. Oh, my God. We got so much going on. I will talk to you down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Introducing Specrite Paint from HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, a new line of exclusive interior paint that's perfect for pros, only at Lowe's. With easy application and fast recoding, excellent hide and coverage, plus exceptional touch-up, it delivers great results every time for every job. Shop Specrite Pro Paint from HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams in-store or online today. Lowe's knows paint. Lowe's knows pros. Selection varies by location. See store at Lowe's.com for details. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. You're in. Cool. (laughs) Yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC.